In Oakland, California, 1966, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale formed the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. The Panthers then went from being just a few members in one local chapter in Oakland to more than 40 chapters across the United States with thousands of members. One of those members was Flores Forbes, who joined the Black Panthers at 16 years old. The Black Panthers' goal was to start a revolution that would bring a change in America. And Flores Forbes was willing to do whatever it took to make that happen, including kill or be killed. Flores Alexander Forbes was born on February 8, 1952. He grew up on the southeast side of San Diego, California. The San Diego neighborhood where Flores lived with his mother, father, and two siblings was relatively nice and quiet and considered a safe area. Both of Flores' parents were active in the community and they kept Flores busy in the community too. He went to church three times a week, he was involved in the Boy Scouts, and he played Little League Baseball and Pop Warner Football. All things considered, Flores had a pretty good childhood. But the racism and discrimination of the 1950s and 60s affected black people everywhere, even Flores' quiet San Diego neighborhood. At 12 years old, Flores was kidnapped by white police officers while riding his bike. The officers got away with the kidnapping by claiming it was for official police business. At 14 years old, Flores was beaten by San Diego police officers while attempting to jog around the track of his high school's football field. The officers claimed they believe Flores is one of a group of suspects who were wanted in the area. By the age of 15, Flores, who had normally gotten good grades in school, started skipping class. He became more interested in the civil rights movement that was happening in California and around the country. Every single night, he'd watch the nightly news segments that showed protesters fighting for equality. One of those protests was happening eight hours away from Flores, in Sacramento, California, where the newly formed Black Panther Party took guns to the state capitol, protesting for their right to carry weapons to protect themselves from police brutality in their neighborhood. The nightly news was the first time Flores had heard about the Black Panthers, and he wanted to know more. Flores' older brother brought him home a Black Panther community newspaper that talked about the formation of the Black Panthers in Oakland and explained their mission to bring about change in America. He also started reading books and educating himself about the politics behind what was causing racial conflicts in the country. And the more he learned, the more he felt he had to do something. At 16 years old, Flores dropped out of high school. He went to the local Black Panther Party branch in San Diego walked into the one-room office and asked, how do I join? The man running the chapter warned Flores that joining the Black Panthers was not a game and that what the Panthers were doing was dangerous work and people were being killed. But the man's warning didn't do much. Flores' mind was already made up. It was 1968. The Black Panther Party's mission revolved around a platform called the Ten Point Program. This program laid out the wants of the party, which included things like an end to police violence and racism, and the right for black people to determine their own destiny. One of the ways the Panthers set out to do this was with free breakfast programs and the Black Panther newspaper. These were the first programs Flores was involved in. Every morning he worked cooking and serving children in the community free breakfast. And every afternoon, he sold the Black Panther newspaper around town. In 1970, Flores was transferred to the Southern California Panthers headquarters in Los Angeles. Los Angeles was known as the Red Zone, since so many Black Panthers had been killed there. Flores quickly learned why his first chapter leader had warned him that the Black Panthers' work was not a game. Although he still sold newspapers and worked with the free breakfast programs, Flores was also now training for shootouts with the police. To protect themselves against attacks from the police and outside enemies, the Panthers used weapons to defend themselves. One of the ways they did this was to require every LA Panther office have two armed members stay up all night, with one person watching the front of the building and the other watching the back. The Los Angeles office that Flores spent most of his time at was a house that had been converted into an office. But here, they didn't just have two lookouts for security, they had a whole fortress. 
Flores and the other Panther members designed the house like a military bunker. In each closet, they dug holes 10 feet straight down, then made tunnels that led out to the side of the house so that they could see the police coming before the police saw them. The home was fortified so that no bullets could penetrate it, and they had an arsenal filled with shotguns, rifles, a variety of handguns, and hundreds of rounds of ammo. During the two years Flores spent in Los Angeles, five Black Panther Party members were killed. Dozens were arrested. Some members went on the run from the law, and some were kicked out. And then there were others who simply left out of fear. But Flores stayed strong. Being a Black Panther member was his life. The Panthers came before his family, his relationships, even himself, and he never thought about doing anything else. This dedication proved his loyalty to the party. It earned him numerous promotions, and he started moving in circles led by the founders Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. In the beginning of 1972, Flores moved to the Black Panther chapter in East Oakland, California. Oakland is where the Black Panthers originated, and it's where Flores started being groomed to join the party's most secretive and elite position, security. And within a year, Huey Newton had appointed Flores head of security. He was 20 years old. As head of security, Flores was in charge of a group of men and women whose job it was to protect founders Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, and anyone else within the party who was working to make a change in the community. The Panthers were consistently working to make changes in the community of Oakland. They created free medical clinics, registered people to vote, and they opened an elementary school. But their most important goal at the time was to get rid of those in power who were racist. To make this happen, Black Panther co-founder Bobby Seale ran for mayor of Oakland. One of Flores' jobs was to provide security to Bobby Seale during political events and speeches. Both Bobby Seale and Huey Newton worked tirelessly to make changes politically, but Huey Newton also worked to make a change in the streets. Huey Newton started taxing Oakland drug dealers, pimps, and hustlers 23% of what they made hustling in the streets. This was done as a way for the Black Panther Party to regulate what was going on in the community. Not surprisingly, many of the drug dealers and pimps didn't appreciate being taxed off their hustle. That's where Flores came in. One of Flores' jobs was to make collecting the tax money as smooth as possible. For three years, Flores worked in the streets of Oakland, going to stash houses, street corners, or directly to the pimps and drug dealers' homes to make sure they paid their taxes. Everything that the Black Panthers did, politically and in the streets, was all part of the party's greater goal, which was liberation and freedom for the Black community. And as the years went on, they continuously trained like soldiers, fighting for a revolutionary war they believed was coming. Flores was the one in charge of acquiring the weapons needed for this training. He purchased thousands of weapons, and every week he maintained and organized the Black Panther's vast inventory of guns and ammo that was secretly stored at different safe houses around the city. By 1977, Flores was one of 13 running the Black Panther Party. Bobby Seale was no longer with the Panthers, but the party had continued on with their mission under the guidance of Huey Newton. But moving forward was made difficult by all the media attention surrounding the arrest and murder charges against Huey Newton. Newton had been charged with the murder of a prostitute in Oakland, California, three years earlier. Newton's trial was to take place in October of 1977, and the prosecution had a star witness, the prostitute's pimp, who claimed to have witnessed Huey Newton commit the murder. By this time, Flores had been a member of the Black Panthers for nine years. He was 25 years old and 100% committed to the party's revolutionary objective. And he believed Huey Newton's leadership would guide them there. So to have Huey Newton put in prison for murder would mean an end to the Panthers' goals. And Flores was not about to let that happen. So he devised a plan to kill the prosecution's star witness. Flores put together a five-man, one-woman crew of Black Panther members. Flores and his crew's plan was to kill the witness on the morning of Huey Newton's preliminary hearing. 
At 4 a.m. that Monday, in Richmond, California, Flores and two of the men headed to the witness's home. With them, they had an M16 automatic rifle and two 12-gauge pump shotguns. The men approached the home planning to gain entry from a side window. But as soon as they began to enter the house, the owner of the home heard the break-in and started shooting. Flores and his accomplices fired back. In the exchange, one of the men avoided being hit. Flores was shot in the hand, and the other man with him was shot in the neck and died at the scene. It was later discovered that the owner of the home, who survived the attack, wasn't even the witness Flores and his men were after. The witness who was supposed to testify against Huey Newton lived next door. Immediately after the shooting, Flores and his partner each went on the run. Using the Panther's underground network of connections, Flores was able to get out of town and get medical attention for his hand, which had been partially shot off during the murder attempt. The Black Panther's network of connections was also able to get Flores to safe houses around the country. He head out in Chicago, New York, Boston, and St. Louis. Back in California, newspapers were calling the attempted hit the Richmond Incident. Police labeled Flores a dangerous Panther gunman and issued a warrant for his arrest. But by then, Flores was already on the other side of the country. For three years, Flores stayed on the run from the law. But during that time, he came to the conclusion that a life living under the radar and always looking over his shoulder was not the life he wanted to live. He also started feeling bad about what he had tried to do that Monday morning in 1977. So in 1980, Flores returned to California's Bay Area and turned himself in. He was charged with felony murder for the death of his partner in crime. These charges follow California's law that states if while committing a felony someone is killed during the crime, everyone involved can be charged with murder. Flores was offered a reduced sentence if he gave inside information about the Black Panther Party's organization. He declined. And after a three-week trial, he was found guilty of second-degree murder and sentenced to eight years in prison. The woman who Flores and his crew planned to kill later recanted her story, and Huey Newton was released from jail. And the third man, who was with Flores the morning of the attempted hit, was never seen again. While Flores was in prison, he set a plan for himself that once he got out, he would redirect his whole life towards a path to success. And when he was released in 1985 after serving just under five years, that's exactly what he did. By the age of 37, Flores had earned a bachelor's and a master's degree. And he took a job as an urban planner where he would be in a position to plan and reshape communities. And today, he's an author, professor, and Associate Vice President of Community Affairs at Columbia University. It's now been over 30 years since Flores was a member of the Black Panther Party, but he's still helping make changes in his community. Using social science, teaching, and urban development, Flores is committed to helping create better living environments for people, which was the Black Panther's goal all along. <laughs>